can't just kind of just relax the whole time when it's out there, but it does have an easier time setting up maybe the trick room. Just got to be careful around something like the mindshare that could potentially carry the taunt to prevent that from being set up. But I think if your half can actually utilize that trick room mode, I think, you know, uh, Daniel's going to really struggle because he doesn't really have the Pokemon that can operate in trick room mm -hmm. as well as maybe some of the, the other teams that we've seen throughout this event so far. Well, we've done a little bit of analysis there, so let's get this tournament started. Very excited to see the leads here, and for Yoav, I can see a Grimmsnarl and a Porygon too, and on the opposing side of the field for Daniel, it is that Minshaw paired up with Thunderous. Yeah, coming out in game one here to support Daniel's side of the field, you know, and um, providing fake out support, going to disrupt the Grim Snarl from being able to potentially get screens up, which is going to prolong the defensive capabilities of your half's team. Porygon 2 is a little bit threatened here because potentially if Thunderous does go for the max here, you know, it's got max knuckle and that'll boost its attack and Mindshow's attack and Mindshow can then go for a potential close combat into that slot. Um, and, you know, if your half takes a lot of damage onto that Porygon 2 early on in this game, it's not going to be good if he wants to go down a trick room route later so maybe he wants to think about how he wants to approach this if he's comfortable with potentially being able to get a reflect up now that'll definitely help out and uh, daniel does have to be worry a little bit about a potential ice beam from that porygon 2 that could come out onto the thunderous and do big damage yeah, well, Porygon 2 just going to leave the field. Certainly was a threat for Daniel. Trick Room is not the strategy that Daniel wants with a generally speedy looking team, but Charizard is going to join into the fray. Daniel going to go straight away for that Dynamax, however, and I believe it's Dynamaxing up that Thunderous. And this is where you get lots of different options. Like you said, Lee, you could go for that Max Knuckle and boost up both the attack stats on these Pokemon. That would also help out the Min Shao who wants to go for something like a close combat, but can also go for something like a Max Airstream here and boost up the speed. So it's going to be interesting to see which play Daniel wants to go down for here um of course um oh the fake out was the option there coming out into that charizard with a critical hit as well does a really decent chunk of damage and it is indeed going to be the max knuckle coming out going to target down into what was the porygon 2 charizard's going to be able to take that much better but critically for daniel even if it doesn't do a lot of damage those max moves will still give you the boost if they're able to connect so the minshaw now looking to be much stronger with that attack stat boosted Grimmsnarl, however, is going to target down into it with that Spirit Break. Takes it right down to its Focus Sash. So, unless Yoav has a way to be able to try and remove the Minshaw from play in that next turn, um, then it's going to be able to hang around and apply a lot of offensive pressure. Yeah, definitely. You know, the, the attack boost there is, is so big for Daniel going on the offensive straight away. But in itself, you know, the Thunderous and the Minshaw on to plus one attack. They're going to be able to do a lot of damage this next turn, even if there are resisted moves coming out. You know, the Mindshow is close combat resisted by both the Charizard and the Grim Snarl, respectively, where they type in. But the Charizard not in a great position here. You may want to see Yohav retreat the Charizard or protect it here because a Max Lightning coming out here from the Thunderous or an Airstream isn't going to be enough to take it down even behind a Reflect. Yeah, wise here from Yoav to be able to set up that Reflect, but Charizard not going to be able to take that powerful Max Airstream that was, of course, plus one boosted. Um, also, now Daniel's able to get another boost on his side of the field in that speed. So Minshaw and the Thunderous also going to be at plus one speed here. So the offensive pressure is going to be speedy as well as powerful. Minshaw, however, going to go for that close combat. Like you said, not going to be dealing super effective damage by any means into that Grim Snarl, but thanks to the boost, still does a huge chunk of damage despite the Reflect. Yeah, that's a massive amount of damage into the Grim Snarl. You can see the, the impact that that attack boost has already had onto Daniel's side of the field. And like you say, you know, we've said he's approaching this very offensively and um, taking down the Charizard, getting the Grim Snarl down to a low point now where it's going to be in knockout range from the Thunderous or another Mindshare close combat this next turn. The problem is as well that it is going to be obviously slower than, than both the Pokemon and Daniel's side of the field. Groudon going to come back in. It gives you have a little bit more stability. Defensive capabilities are a lot better than what has been on the field from so far but you think if you are you'll have you probably want to lose the grim snarl now and get the porygon 2 in for free the max turns will then be over and then that might give you a chance to get your trick room set up to support that groudon a little bit further considering that the airstreams have been set up on daniel's side of the field um but groudon it probably needs the max or protect here to get around any big damage coming out from daniel's side of the field because it's going to be the one pokemon that you'll have has to rely on going into these next few turns 
Yes, and of course the Thunderous as well moving before the Minshell could possibly go for another Max Knuckle and boost up the close combat even more of that Minshell. So it could be a formidable threat still. And I think you called this really well here, Lee. The Gradon has to be the offensive powerhouse now. It needs to be able to get that HP up, use its defensive capabilities as well to kind of withstand the onslaught that Daniel is throwing across the field at the moment. So a wise choice to Dynamax it here. Grim's not going to go for the light screen, however, just wanting to set up more protective measures for that side of the field. As the Max Knuckle comes up once again from the Thunderous so we're going to be boosting up that attack stat. Doesn't really do a lot to that Groudon though. You can really see the defensive capabilities of Groudon, particularly behind that Reflect, really helping out here, doing very, very small amounts of damage. But the Minshout does go for that close combat. And again, Groudon able to take that really, really well. So great here from you have to be able to boost it up, leaving Groudon free to go for a very powerful Mox Max Rockfall. And this is something that the Thunderous definitely doesn't want to take. It doesn't have any defense to set up at the moment. The Sand is going to come onto the field as well and chip away at these Pokemon, removing the Minshout from the field at the end of this turn. Yeah, it's a really nice play from your have here, you know, not targeting the, the mind shell and making sure that you're getting some use out of Grimmsnarl as well if that was targeted by the close combat this turn and allowing the sand kind of residual damage here to remove the mind shell because it's down on its sash. So a really nice play here from your have to kind of pull himself back into this game slightly. The Thunder is obviously on plus two attack. is still going to be threatening, but we've just seen how much damage it was doing behind the Reflect into the Dynamax Groudon. It's going to be one of the best Pokemon to kind of sit in front of Thunder so you'll have in a decent enough position now kind of playing out these max turns from Daniel Sutherfield but you've got to worry about potentially the, uh, the Shadow Rider Calyrex that would be in the back. Potentially, if you knock out the Thunderous, if you are have, you're allowing the Calyrex to come in next to that indeed, and that can cause you all sorts of issues, even with the light screen up. You know, Grimmsnarl has, um, is on such low health, it'll probably go down to an Astro Barrage, especially a helping hand boosted one, and Groudon certainly isn't going to be that sort of Pokemon that wants to be able to take that attack either. I mean, that's the thing, Groudon's very difficult at the moment as well. You can't deal a huge amount of damage to it. So I think if you're Daniel, this is where you need to be able to kind of avoid it on these max turns, whether you're going for something like a fly with your Thunderous or redirecting those single target attacks with the Ndidi. But instead, just going on the defensive from both perspectives, you know, the Thunderous jumping up to the air, going to be able to avoid any attacks this turn and the Protect there on the Ndidi that is unfortunately still going to have to take this max Quake. So even through Protect, it does a little bit of chip damage there. But I think the critical thing is that special defense boost going on on your side of the field. That is just going to make the Ndidi a little bit harder to deal damage out, but I think critically that Calyrex in the back as well is not going to appreciate these defenses being set up to get in its way. No, that's a thing, and you know that Yohav's probably got that in the back of his mind. He's got the light screen up to help with the, the, the Calyrex in the back, and then these additional special defense boosts are just going to make Groudon even tougher to take down and handle those big, you know, expanding forces, Astro Barrages that would potentially be coming out this next turn, uh, the next few turns, uh, just a lot easier. Um, the Grimmsnarl in, in a tricky spot now where it probably will go down to a fly, and the Ndidi, you know, in a place where it can go for a redirection um, with Follow Me, but just seeing the help in hand to support the Thunderous this turn. Yeah, just being a help, helpful little Pokemon here, gonna boost up that fly into the Groudon. Not gonna be dealing too much damage, particularly as Groudon's able to utilize its Citrus Berry and regain a little bit of HP here. Also means that Grimmsnarl's able to survive any damage in this particular turn and is still free to go. Max Quake gonna come out once again from that Groudon. It's not enough to pick up a KO against the Ndidi, um, but um, I was about to say the residual damage would have an effect, but it is wearing those safety goggles that so will also be able to avoid being KO'd on this turn. Unless Grimmsnarl has something to say about it. The Spirit Break, however, is going to target down into that opposing Thunderous and pick up the KO instead. Yeah, and uh, the Thunderous finally going down here for Daniel, but it does pave the way for him to uh, bring in the Calyrex now. And you can see the utility and how good those safety goggles are from just avoiding that additional chip from the Sandstorm that's in play because it allows it to be in effect now to provide either help and hand support or redirection support to give Calyrex that little bit of additional room that it might need to avoid an attack from the Groudon or the, um, the, the Grimmsnarl. The problem is though for Daniel is the Groudon now has access to a double target attack. So the redirection not really gonna be super helpful here um, and with those special defense boosts you know it's probably sitting in a, a decent spot to get a big attack off this next turn also the grim snarl you know it does have access to thunder wave but with the psychic terrain up not really going to be able to utilize that here because obviously the um the the prankster ability any priority attacks are kind of blocked by that that uh, psychic terrain so grim snarl you're probably looking you'll have maybe wanting to protect here but play a bit conservative get the the porygon 2 onto the field but maybe allowing the grim snarl to go down try a, a spirit break into the opposing Calyrex um, and if you do see something like an expanded force at least then you know 
the, the Grimstone is going to be able to stick around for an, an additional turn here. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If you go for the Expanding Force, you're not going to be able to hit the Grimmsnarl. And if you go for the Astral Bride and Porygon 2 joins the field, you're not going to be able to hit it either. Indeed, you're going to go for the Helping Hand, though. So whatever choice this Kyrex is locked into, he's going to be able to deal out some big damage. It is indeed the Astral Barrage. Not going to do any damage to Groudon, as it has protected. but going to be able to target down into that Grimmsnarl. And I think this is really wise from Daniel trying to get rid of the Grimmsnarl because it can go for the Spirit Breaks and start lowering the special defense. And that's certainly some... I'm sorry, the special attack. And that's something that the Kyrex doesn't want. It wants the boost just like it's got from its Grimnay ability. Yeah, and now getting that boost, it puts it in a bit more of a, a, an awkward position for y'all have to deal with. You know, even with the special defense boosts on your ground on, are you going to be able to take a helping hand boosted expanding force? You know, the Porygon 2 is in a great spot where it, it probably will be able to take that and maybe get a trick room up. But, you know, if you all have, do you risk going for a double protect here to try and get your trick room up? Because Porygon 2 is definitely the one Pokemon that you all have got access to now that will be able to take at least one attack here. Um, and you would kind of think, hmm, maybe protecting Groudon it's a little risky you know that the chances of getting consecutive protect off uh, you know drop every time you do that but is the is it is it worth the risk yeah, I mean, if you set up your Trick Room, you kind of want your Groudon hanging around, but not going to risk going for the Double Protect. Expanding Force, Helping Hand Boosted, going to come out from that Calyrex. And it is enough to pick up a KO wow. against the Groudon, but look at the damage on that Porygon 2. Nearly picks up the KO, takes it right down into that red zone. Absolutely incredible damage there from that Calyrex. Yeah, and we just see the Eerie Impulse come out from the Porygon 2, which is a really nice tool to utilize, you know, from your half dropping the special attack by two stages. So um, kind of just nullifying those chilling near boosts now, but the, the Porygon 2 is going to be too heavily damaged now to be able to kind of claw this one back and you can see the impact that the Calyrex has had on the field since it's entered from Daniel and just being able to kind of clean everything up, even with the light screen and the special defense boosts on top of everything else. Yeah, there's been a really strong offensive pressure from Daniel throughout this whole game. Having the Minshaw out there to be able to target down the Porygon 2 early on, and particularly that combination of Minshaw and Thunderous picking up that solid KO against the opposing Charizard just meant that it was a little bit difficult for you to kind of get momentum going. And now that we're in this end game, like you said, as soon as that Calyrex Shadow Rider joined the field, it's just been such a great powerhouse against the opposing Pokemon here, particularly when indeed he's able to stick around the way that it has to be able to provide support, whether it's in Helping Hand or with Redirection. Yeah, and we didn't actually get to see this the turn play out there, but we did see the reveal of Draining Kiss on that Shadow Rider Calyrex. Powerful. So, I think it's timely to jump into game two and see exactly what adaptations our players are going to make. Remember, we are in the loser side of the bracket, so the winner will continue in the competition, but unfortunately, the loser of the set will be knocked out. It's going to be a Groudon and Grimmsnarl coming out straight away for Yoav, and Daniel is leading out once again with Thunderous and Minshaw. Yeah, and it's a much better lead here for Yoav straight away. You know, the Groudon, we saw how well it can take those attacks from Thunderous and Minshaw, you know, the double up into it there. So if it does decide to max here, it can do some big damage to the opposing Thunderous and kind of waste almost the Dynamax from Daniel's side in a couple of turns and really start getting those defensive boosts kind of stacking up on the Groudon as well. The, uh, the Grimmsnarl here, there's the opportunity potentially if we don't see a fake out from that mind shell onto the grim snarl that there, there is a double up potential into that mind shell but then you've got the problem where you're you're allowing daniel to get something next to the thunderous on the field where it can take advantage of those airstream boosts yeah, and I mean, the last time we saw Groudon facing down against both of these Pokemon on Daniel's side of the field, it was able to take the attacks really well. So Groudon looking to be in a really strong position here, um, and Grimmsnarl can, of course, provide really good support. I'm not sure if Daniel was able to lock in just at that very last second. Um, looks like things have all gone okay, as Daniel is going for that Dynamax once again. And I think it's nice to kind of have these early Dynamax turns here, where Daniel wants to get set up in the strategy he wants, whether it's boosting up the attack or boosting up the speed. And I think Thunderous is a really great utility Pokemon to be able to give you the flexibility to put your ball pieces into play exactly how you want, particularly early on from this game one. Um, we're going to see a Dynamax on the other side of the field though as well, Lee. I think it might be that Groudon. Yeah, you would imagine that, that your have taken full advantage of having that Groudon out on the field in front of two Pokemon. It doesn't really mind being in front of here. And it's going to be able to get big damage onto the Thunderous here, you know. Not worried about the Sash too much on the Mind Show as well, because we saw in that first game how if you do go for the Max Rock 4, you get the Sandstorm up, and that does affect the, the potential ability of Mind Show having that Sash going forward. Yeah, the Reflect coming up from the Grimmsnarl, just protecting its partner Groudon here from the offensive pressure on Daniel's side of the field. Once again, Thunderous is going to go for that Max Knuckle. 
um, dealing a big um, sort of chunk of damage there. Just going to be boosting up, um, I think, the attack stat, um, which is going to be the critical thing needed here to be able to boost up that Min Shao going for that close combat into the Groudon. You can see, though, what a tank Groudon is. Yeah, and I think there we did see Daniel try to lock in the, the fake out, but maybe just timed out there and unfortunately wasn't able to get a fake out onto the Grim Snarl, which makes you know, getting that additional damage onto the Groudon that much harder because the Reflect was then able to go up from the Grim Snarl. Mm -hmm. Do you see the Groudon already just concentrating down, not really too worried about the Thunderous here, just going for those those Max Quakes, getting that Special Defense kind of bolstered up already in this game to kind of mm. prepare for maybe a, a Shadow Rider Calyrex to come in later in this game. And um, it, it does definitely help the Groudon out. Grim Snarl in a nice position now to get its light screen up and um, the, the Groudon this turn could potentially go from Max Rockfall into the Thunderous because this is a turn where you, you are going to be able to get rid of the, the Mian Shao mm -hmm. and you're going to be able to get some big damage onto the Thunderous. So uh, you're getting a lot out of this turn potentially going for that. And um, Brimstone not really got many other options outside of um, light screen here, which is also going to be very, very good supportively going forward for uh, your half side of the field. Yeah, I like the play going for the Max Quake there because you could be tempted to go for the Max Rockfall and try and pick up the KO with the Sand against the Minshaw, but you don't need to and you don't want to give Daniel the option to bring in a Pokemon from the back. Light Screen being set up though in preparation for those special attackers that may well be lurking in the back for Daniel as Thunderous does very similarly to game one and goes for that Max Airstream. So the attack's been boosted up, but now also the speed will be as well. So if these Pokemon are able to survive out the turn, then they're going to be able to have that speedy offensive pressure as well. But Minshaw going for that close combat into the Grimstone, it is enough to be able to pick up the KO. So now Daniel doesn't have to worry about those spirit breaks coming in um, and potentially, you know, reducing the special attack of something like the Calyrex in the back. Um, Groudon still to move and is indeed going to go for that max rock force. So it's definitely the time to go for it. You can apply a lot of pressure to that Thunderous and pick up the KO on the Minshaw in the process. And you can see it does a huge chunk of damage. Yeah, and I think what Daniel, we've seen a kind of trend from Daniel in his plays, he'd be forced to bring that Indeedy in this next turn, which, you know, it, it puts him in a little bit more of a defensive position where you have to preserve the Indeedy to support the Calyrex coming onto the field because you, you, you don't want to switch in Calyrex now and then, and then you know, bring bring the Indeedy in because it, the Thunderous is a prime target. We know it's not got Protect on Max Guard or at least it's never, it never has done so far in this match. So it's it's another easy target for the Groudon just to go for that Max Rockfall again or just go for the the um, the, the, the Max Quake as well onto that Indeedy. And even if it protects this next turn, um, it's easy enough for Groudon to go into that just to get that special defense boost. And now the switch into Porygon 2 for mm. Yohab is incredible here because he's got the option to go for the Trick Room and there's not really anything on, on Daniel's side of the field that's going to be able to stop that. The Thunderous has got the attack boost, of course, um, and it is going to be able to do a significant amount of damage, but not enough with the Reflect support that the Grim Snarl's already set up for your half side of the field. That's the thing, the Porygon 2 coming in here is excellent for your half. Indeedy and... Um... The Thunderous, thanks to the screen support, aren't going to be able to pick up a KO against it. So if you're Daniel, it now comes down to whether you want to just try and get some damage on that Porygon 2 anyway, or try and pick up a KO against the Groudon so that it can't be utilized in Trick Room. Ultimately, if you're not going to be able to pick up the KO against that Porygon 2, as soon as Trick Room is set, Porygon 2 can just go for a cover anyway and recap all that HP. So you might want to be better suited to try and deal damage to a Pokemon that's not going to be able to regain that HP later on. But indeed, he's just going to go for a Protect here, as the Thunderous does indeed go for that Max Knuckle. I'm going to be talking you down into that Porygon 2. You can see how little damage it does. You are normally so used to seeing these fighting type moves go into a Porygon 2 and doing so much more, but it looks like um, the Reflect really paying off here. And of course, boosting up the attack a little bit more. Groudon not opting to go for the Rock Fall though, so Thunder is able to survive out this turn, then DD going to be taking that little bit of damage from behind its Protect. But I think the one thing that you has done really nicely here is set up this Groudon so that when the special attackers come in from the back, it's going to have a lot of defenses here in play. Yeah, definitely. And now the Trick Room is in effect in this Groudon and Porygon 2 and, it, and one of their more favorable environments, especially against two Pokemon that, you know, the Indeedee doesn't mind the Trick Room too much, but it's not really the offensive kind of threat that you would want out on the field like the Calyrex on Daniel's side of the field. And the Thunderous is kind of just a sitting duck now. It'll either go down to an Ice mm. Beam or a Rock Slide. Um, and the, the, the problem is here for the Indeedee, it is going to take a lot of damage this turn, whatever happens. If a Rock Slide comes out, it's still going to take a good amount of damage. Um, and, you know, the, that will be enough to get the Thunderous and then you can maybe see a double up from the, uh, the, the Porygon 2, either Ice Beam or maybe go for a bit more disruption with an Eerie Impulse just to really reduce the expanding force damage from that, that, that Pokemon on Daniel's side of the field.
That's the thing, Porygon 2 is such a great utility at the moment. It can go for the Ice Beam, apply pressure to the Thunder Rest, and um, I can't remember, I think it might have got the special attack boost when it came in, Lee, so maybe the Ice Beams would be able to deal even more damage. And like you said, having the Eerie Impulse is just able to kind of shut down any of those special attackers on the field. But I think it's wise in Porygon 2 here just to go for the nice recover, boost itself back up so it's healthy and ready to go, as indeed he goes for that expanding force. And although it will be able to connect on both targets, you can see the minimal amount of damage that it is doing. Ground, I'm going to be able to connect its Rock Slide as well pick up the ko against the thunderous and do some more damage to that opposing in dd so daniel no longer has that thunderous it's going to be a pokemon coming in from the back and i'm sure it's going to be that calyrex to stand side by side with the Ndidi. yeah but it's not in its most favorable environment now in the trick room it, it will be moving last out of everything on the field um and it's going to be about whether or not it can how many precipice blades it can really take because i think if you are daniel you're kind of forced to almost follow me you could take the the, the approach where you could maybe go help in hand just to get that big damage onto the field, but then you're going to be subjected to something like Eerie Impulse that you know is on the Porygon 2 here, and you kind of want mm. to try and avoid that if you are Calyrex. Of course, you've got the option to potentially protect as well to try and stall these Trick Room turns out. You protect this turn with both Calyrex and Ndidi, and then you try and get an attack off the next turn, and then protect the following turn and that will be the trick room ended so maybe play it out like that and once the trick room has ended you're going to be in a great spot but it's just about how well you can kind of manage the damage in between mm. those turns and and keep that porygon 2 at a level maybe with the attacking turn where it's it's threatened the following turn where the trick room is needed to be set up again by your half that's the thing as well, if you go for the Protects, the Groudon could capitalize on that and maybe try and set up a Swords Dance. But I think Ndidi going for the option here just to redirect away the Eerie Impulse is really great here for Daniel. So Ndidi going to be able to take that Habit Special Attack lowered by a considerable amount, but I think it's definitely better for the Calyrex to be able to keep those boosts. Groudon just going to go straight away for the Precipice Blades, does manage to connect on both the opposing Pokemon, both able to survive, but you can see they're not going to be able to take another one of those Precipice Blades going forward. The um, expanding force going down into these Pokemon really not dealing too much damage, and particularly even with the chip here, it's going to be really hard to stall out these these Trick Room turns here for Calyrex and Ndidi. Yeah, just taking too much damage there and just not being able to get the, the kind of the damage in return back onto the field. You can see how useful the light screen and the, the mm -hmm. double special defense that Groudon's got on the single special defense boost that the Porygon 2's got, how, you know, impactful that attack is now going into that. So you have really managed this game a lot better than the first one, kind of learned some lessons, got these Pokemon in a position from the get-go to get them set up and kind of end up with this board position where he's able to get the trick room up and really make life difficult for the Calyrex to perform. I mean, now we see the double protect coming out here from a Daniel Porygon 2 going to be able to go for the Ice Beam and not be able to find a mark, and it'll be the same with the Groudon and the Rock Slide. So, no damage coming out here other than what possibly the Sand wants to deal um, on the battlefield or not, because it has subsided. So that's a little bit of a sigh of relief there for the Calyrex, but there are still Trick Room turns to go here, Lee. Yeah, and that's that's the big problem here. Can you get a double protect off? Because that's what you need if you're the Calyrex and indeed he really, because you need the additional support, I think, to kind of stack up that help and hand boost to potentially pick up a knockout on both the Groudon and the Porygon to really realistically going into that next turn. So if you are Daniel, you're kind of praying that you are going to be able to get a double protect off here. And if you're Yohav, you're hoping that the, the Calyrex isn't able to get that off. Ndidi's one has failed and Calyrex's one has failed as well. Porygon 2 going to be going for its recover as well, knowing that Trick Room is over um, at the end of this turn. It wants to make sure it's as healthy as can be when it goes back into the speedy mode on the battlefield. Groudon, however, going straight for that Rock Slide, able to connect on both the opposing Pokemon. It's not enough to pick up the KO on the Calyrex, surviving on just one HP, but Ndidi has left the field just as the Trick Room and indeed the um, Psychic Terrain leaves the field as well. Yeah, and the problem is that the Calyrex can get an attack off, but because of the life orb there, that, you know, the Calyrex is going to go down. So, you know, you could even just leave the ground on and probably going to as, as kind of fodder here just to take the hit and allow Calyrex to kind of KO itself with that recoil damage from the life orb item. So um, the, the, the ground on not wanting to risk a Precipice Blades uh, that turn, I guess, wanting to <laughs> go with maybe, you know, it's not even that much more accurate, but Rock Slide there just to... Uh, to maybe pick up a flinch if anything did decide to attack that turn which is you know not not too far uh, out of um you know it just makes sense mm -hmm. to, to go for something like that really that turn 
Yeah, the Rock Slide Flinch is something we know all too well when it comes to these Pokemon battles, <laughs> and it certainly was an option to go for here, and I think, like you said as well, that Life Orb, very unfortunate for their Calyrax, and particularly as well with the Psychic Train being gone, you can't utilize Expanding Force the same way that you want to. You won't be able to get that double target, and that can be a problem when you're facing down against a Porygon 2 that can't be hit by these Astral Barrages, as you can see there. Porygon 2, however, is going to be able to clean up the game, going for that Ice Beam and pick up the final KO to allow Yoav to take this to a Game 3. Very exciting to kick off the broadcast. Lee. Yeah, definitely. And you know, it's a big turnaround from game one. You saw you have big, make some big adjustments there. You saw, we, we talked about it after game one. You know, that's a really good analysis there. So let's not hang around anymore. Let's get into game three, see which player is going to progress in the Players' Cup three. Yeah, it really is all to play for here. Groudon and Grimmsnarl jumping out for Yoav here onto the battlefield. It worked so well in game two. And a slight adjustment here for Daniel. The Minshao is still in play, but this time there is a Cinderace by its side. Yeah, an interesting adjustment here from Daniel. And you know, the one thing that he's probably looking at here is the Cinderace is going to be able to take advantage of that, that sun that's been set up by the Groudon, especially with its um, Gigantamax ability. You know, it's got that big signature attack that it's going to be able to get boosted by the sun and do some big damage to the Groudon. Now, Groudon, you know, is very good defensively and especially with Reflect supporting it. But this one turn that you've got, if you are Cinderace, um, you've got the fake out support to kind of prevent that Reflect going up, um, which is really useful. But the one thing, if you go for that, the G-Max Fireball with the, the Cinderace, is that the Groudon can get a big max quake onto you as well, which is going to be super effective damage and, and really be a hindrance to you going forward. That's the thing, you can change your, you know, typing with the Libero ability, but sometimes if your opponent's able to predict that as well, or you just keep it being that fire type, then it can be dangerous when you're facing down against a Groudon. But Cinder is showing no fear here at all and going straight away into its Gigantamax form here to apply some pressure to the opposing side of the field. But Yoav's going to match that with a Dynamax of their very own, and I believe it's going to be that Groudon, of course, to be able to apply a lot of pressure, like you said, with the Max Quake critically boosting up those special defenses as well. And I think also being able to apply pressure with something like the, the Max Rockfall. If the Cinderace does want to go for something like a Max Airstream and turn us that flying type, it's not going to appreciate taking the Max Rockfall at all. So Grimmsnarl going to go straight away with the Thunder Waves that we haven't seen in action so far this game, connecting right down onto that Cinderace. They're going to be reducing the speed considerably. As Min Shao goes straight up for the close combat, there's no Reflect in play, but this still does a decent chunk to Grimmsnarl. Not enough to be able to pick up any sign of a KO, however, leaving Groudon free to go for this Max Quake. And it's going to be able to target right down into that opposing Cinderace and pick oh. up the solid KO. The fact that the speed was reduced meant that, you know, this Cinderace didn't have the opportunity to go for that max airstream, make it a flying type and dodge out of the way. It was going to be stuck in its flyer typing and then fall victim to the max quake. Yeah, Daniel not opting to go for the fake out there, potentially thinking maybe a switch would come out from your heart, thinking that fake out maybe airstream going into that slot, but being very bold and sticking in uh, with the Grim Snarl, going for that Thunder Wave, and it really pays off here. You see that Daniel's got no utility out of his Dynamax Pokemon, and the Groudon sitting in a, a great position here, already getting that special defensive boost, and the Grim Snarl going to be able to go for potentially a light screen this next turn. You don't need to worry too much about the, the, the Mind Show if you if you are your half, you know, because the Groudon's defenses are so big anyway, you don't really worry about uh, the physical attacks from that end, and you know you're going to be quite able to, to take care of that later on with potentially other things in the back. Um, but uh, yeah, all things considered, Daniel gone really far behind in this first turn and got a lot to do to kind of claw this one back. That's the thing, it's never easy when you lose your Dynamax, particularly so early on, and the, the Gigantamax Cinderace didn't even able to get a single max move off in that situation. So there was no benefits here from Daniel. We saw in games one and two how critical they were to be able to get the speed and the attack boost up as well. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, you know, if you you if you've got some utility out of Cinderace here, it would have been it would have been brilliant. You may you could have went for the Grim Snarl here, potentially removed it from the field, removed that kind of support network that you have been relying on so heavily, and that would have been a great play. But you know, um the, the, it's never really great Pokemon to sit in front of Groudon with because if you if you do get caught like that, and obviously the Thunder Wave, which is aware of with the, the open team sheets, really does punish you and that max quake just far too much from the Groudon doesn't need to worry then about Going for the max quake because you know you're always going to be faster and the Librera ability not going to be able to kick in. 
Yeah, Minshaw just going to be able to finish up against that Grimmsnarl with the close combat. But before it was KO'd, Grimmsnarl was able to get that light screen up. And again, that's critical. You've dealt with kind of the physical attackers on Daniel's side of the field here. Now you need to get prepared for those special attackers that will be waiting in the back. And Groudon going for this Max Quake down into the Minshaw. Going to be taking it down to its Focus Sash. Of course, no residual damage here on the field. But I think being able to set up those Max Quakes and preparing itself is the best situation here. Groudon's not going to be scared of the Minshaw. We've seen how little damage it can deal. And indeed, it's trying its best in the psychic terrain but it's just not going to be enough when you're dealing with such a titan such as Groudon. No, and the, the thing here for your have is this Groudon's still sitting very healthy at this point, you know. Um, not really worried too much about anything that's coming out from Daniel's side of the field at the minute. The mind shout is it, it can do a bit of damage obviously to the Porygon too, but is it going to be enough? Even with a helping hand, is close combat going to be enough to pick up the knockout onto it with that reflect support uh, that's there? Um, sorry, there's no reflect support there. So potentially you could do, but I think, you know, the one thing that you could do if you're Groudon, maybe set up a max rock fall this turn um, and, and just allow that kind of chip to take down the Yain Shao and do some damage to the Ndidi in the same in the same turn and try and get a trick room up with, with Porygon too. Yeah, the Ndidi knowing that it could be in the way here. Going for that Protect and Minshaw actually going straight away for that Taunt into the opposing Porygon 2. It's going to shut down any potential here for a Trick Room as Groudon does indeed go for the Max Rock Fall. Going to target down into the Ndidi, do some damage and I think critically, like you said there, Lee, just set up that residual so the Minshaw goes down at the end of the turn. But very interesting for the Porygon 2 to be able to sit here and be taunted. You know, it has a lot of sort of status moves like the Trick Room, Eerie Impulse and Recover as well. So it's really now only locked into being able to go for Ice Beam. I wouldn't be surprised to see it switch out at the next turn just so that it has the utility of all of its moves going forward yeah that, that that probably would be the indication there because once you can reset the taunt then allow it to kind of come back onto the field um it's going to have access to that again we saw how problematic that was for daniel but by doing that you're potentially switching something in for the porygon 2 that is going to get knocked out by uh, the calyrex here and giving you that um, Grim Nair boost and making it even more difficult to deal with. So that's something you've got to consider as well. Do you keep the Porygon 2 in or do you kind of protect your ground on, switch the Porygon 2 out just to reset the, the taunt and potentially let something in the back go down for, for, for the ability to set up the trick room the following turn? I mean, possibly as well, if Calyrex and Ndidi together can't necessarily pick up a KO against Groudon and Porygon 2, straight away you could possibly see a double up into that calyrex trying to move it from the field but there's actually been a nice switch here bringing in the incineral the intimidate's not going to matter but i think having the dark typing is going to be critical here obviously you're going to take no damage from any psychic type attacks we've seen a lot of expanding force going around here on the field particularly when there's a porygon 2 in that slot the helping hand comes out groudon decides to go for a protect possibly not going to see any damage being dealt out here on the turn as it is indeed expanding force from the calyrex that is a phenomenal adjustment here from your half because I think it's a very smart one, you know, knowing that this is the route that Daniel's been going down uh, a lot of these battles and, and, and bringing the Incineroar there, the switch, just getting it onto the field so it can start disrupting and really threatening um, the, 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 the Calyrex on Daniel's side of the field with potential attacks like Snarl, which are reducing this special attack um, damage output. And, and it makes it easier for maybe Groudon and Porygon 2 to function going forward. You haven't got your Trick Room, but do you necessarily need it as long as the light screen's in effect and you've got to remember as well that the Groudon has got that plus two special defense already so it is going to be in a better situation especially with a lot more health now and we've seen how much precipice blades can do and um, it doesn't worry about the redirection here so Daniel's still got a lot of work to do and, and really being able to deal with the incineral really puts a, a, a little bit of kink in his, his kind of plan yeah, Incineral is definitely difficult to deal with. Um, the Ndidi, however, just going to go straight away up for that helping hand once again. As Calyrex Sides goes for Astral Barrage this time. There's no normal types here on the field. Wants to deal out some damage, but you can see the light screen and the boosts really paying off. Does very little to that Groudon, and of course not going to be dealing any kind of super effective damage to that Incineral at all. Groudon, able to find its mark with that Precipice Blade and able to retaliate with a really big chunk of damage. As Incineral adds insult to injury, going for that Snarl as well. Actually picks up the KO against the Calyrex and will reduce that special attack of the Ndidi making a very very steep hill for Ndidi to climb to try and close out a set here. Yeah, no, with with only expanding force, it's not going to be able to hit the Incineroar, unfortunately. So that the game is now locked for you have to take this set. Um, unfortunately for Daniel, just not being able to kind of overcome the ground on. And, and like you mentioned earlier, uh, in this match, Lou, losing the Cinderace so quickly at the start of this game was really too costly for him to be able to kind of come back from. 
Well, Groudon just going to be able to go for that Precipice Blades once again and pick up the KO, meaning Yoab Ruben is going to be able to take this loser's round two match. Huge congratulations to him. Yeah, massive, massive comeback. You know, especially after game one where you thought, mm -hmm. wow, this is going to be quite difficult for him to kind of uh, overcome this this really offensive team from Daniel, but really adjusted magnificently, you know, and uh, got his trick room upset up in game two, made it very difficult for Daniel to kind of get a grip on the game. like.